What we call the administrative state begins with a philosophical critique of the American founding, which really had three prongs to it, uh, led by this group of people we have come to call the progressives. The critique was that nature, in the sense of natural rights, imposed undue restrictions on the ability of the Constitution to do what they believed people wanted it to do. That history, capital H, had moved on. That the American founders were unduly dedicated to the idea of nature, natural rights, and limited government. But that government, in fact, was an evolutionary kind of thing that needed to adapt to particular circumstances. The spiritual godfather in America of that indictment was Woodrow Wilson, Professor Woodrow Wilson, long before he entered politics, uh, wrote a series of, of essays and books specifically attacking the American founders and the separation of powers in particular. The idea was that separation of powers imposed very severe constraints as to what the government might do. My concern, which I mentioned at the panel, that we have now, partly for accidental reasons, created a presidential election system in which for all intents and purposes we have a plebiscitary presidency. That is to say, he is selected by a primary system and enjoys a large degree of popular support. We now combine that with the powers of a very large administrative state over which a president has a good deal of discretionary authority. You put together the idea of a, of a plebiscitary president with lots of bureaucratic and potentially arbitrary power, and you have a recipe for democratic demagoguery. And that, I think, is the central th threat facing the American constitutional system at the moment. And it's going to require all three branches to undo that.